This is video number 14 from uh, digital-university.org considering uh, different types of electrical circuit analysis techniques. In um, this video, we're going to take a look at the mesh current analysis again, only we're going to develop what's called the format approach, which uh, really streamlines the whole procedure. And to demonstrate, let's just take a look at this circuit. Here we see that we have two batteries and three resistors that form this network. Incidentally, all of our videos, the first 30 of them or so, are going to be regarding um, direct currents. And the principles that we develop, we'll apply them later on to alternating uh, currents. Also, look, that you notice that we have just voltage sources um, in the circuit. And for our format approach, it only works with voltage sources present. If you have a current source, it might be possible to numerically convert that into a voltage source and then go ahead and apply the technique. And we'll talk about that in um, some future videos. So right now, to develop the format approach and the examples that we're going to use to demonstrate it then, all the currents are going to consist of um, voltage sources only. So let's take a look. As we did in the past two videos, we have two loops to consider here and here. And in each loop, we are assuming that there is a clockwise current flowing through it, as we have demonstrated here for I1 and I2. And when I1 flows through a resistor, it enters at a high potential, exits at a lower potential. Same thing for resistor 6. Now, resistor 6 is sort of shared by current 1 and current 2, so that's why we have a plus minus sign on this side of it from current 2 flowing through the resistor. So let's go through loop 1 and write down um, all the voltage drops and set them equal to zero like we did in the past videos. Here we imagine now, since we're going in a clockwise direction, we're imagining that current I1 goes across the battery and it's going from a lower potential to a higher potential. So that's a positive voltage and we're not going to bother writing down the, uh, the units, it's only the, the numbers. Then here in the resistor, it's going to go flow through the resistor here to cause that voltage drop. And it is a voltage drop, so we designate that with a negative sign. The magnitude of the voltage drop, that's the magnitude of the resistor, which is 1 ohm, times the current flowing through it. And again, another voltage drop here, designate that with a negative sign. Then here, the amount of voltage drop, it is the value of the resistor multiplied by the amount of current flowing through it. Here we're on the I1 side of things, so we say it is I1 minus I2. And then here we imagine it going across the 10 volt resist, 10 volt battery, and this time there's a voltage drop because it's going from high potential to lower potential. So that is designated with a negative sign. So we've went completely around the loop and we set all the voltage drops equal to zero. Now, if we go ahead and just do some simple algebra, what we get is we have 1 plus 6 times I1 minus 6 times I2 equals negative 5. And that's our first mesh current. Now we want to point out is this.
Let's look at this loop again. First thing we see is, considering the voltage sources, there's two of them present in that first loop. This is plus 5, that's minus 10, so that's a voltage of minus 5. And from the voltage sources, then we have it set equal to, we said it's a minus 5 between these two. So on this side of the equation, we set minus 5. Now what we do is we say, well, let's see. We have current I1 flowing through here, and we have current I1 flowing through here. They both have, of course, uh, negative voltage drops. But for now, put that aside. We just say we have 6 plus 1, that's 7 I1. Going through this resistor is I2 in the opposite direction, so we write minus 6 I2. And there we have mesh current number 1. That's identical to what we just derived using the standard approach. So what we do is this. First, look to see if you have constant voltage sources. Add them up. This is plus 5. This is minus 10, so it's minus 5. It goes on this side of the equation with a minus 5 before it. Then look at the resistors that I1 flows through. It goes through this one, goes through this one. That adds up to 7, 7 times I1. In this resistor, which is shared with I2, then we say minus 6 times I2. And that is mesh current number 1. Now let's do this. Let's look at this loop and analyze it using this line of reasoning as we used in the first loop. So here we would say, well, it's going across this battery from a lower potential to a higher potential. So that is plus 10 volts. And we're going to have 6 plus 2. That is 8 times I2. But then we have I1 flowing this way in the opposite direction across the shared resistor. So we have minus 6 times I1. Like this, and that should be mesh current number 2. So here, just by kind of reading the circuit, we have our two mesh current equations. Now, let's do this. Let's look at this second loop again, try to keep things in focus, and let's just go ahead and apply the standard approach as we did in the other two videos. We would say this would be plus 10. This voltage here going from a negative voltage or from a lower potential to a higher potential. Then we would say for this resistor here, a negative voltage drop because we're going from a higher potential to a lower potential. Designate with a minus sign. The, the magnitude of the voltage drop is the value of the resistor. Then here, we're working with current I2, so we say the amount of current flowing through that resistor, this time we say I2 minus I1. And then here we have, again, a voltage drop. Designate that with a minus sign. The magnitude of the voltage drop, the magnitude of the resistor, times the amount of current flowing through it. And that has to equal zero. So let's see. Let's collect our terms and see if 
you get the same equation that we obtained earlier using our new technique. So here we have B minus 10 on this side. Here we have minus 6i2 plus 6 times i1 minus 2 times i2. So this is minus 8 times i2 plus 6i1 equals minus 10. And now multiply through by negative 1. That's plus. This is minus, and now this is plus. So you have 8i2 minus 6i1 equals 10, and that's the same as we wrote down here using our new approach. So you can see that under the right circumstances for the right circuits, this is a much more streamlined approach to solving our problem. So. Now, all we have to do is solve for current I1 and I2. We have two unknowns, I1 and I2, and two separate equations. So that shouldn't give us any big problem. Here we have 7I1 minus 6 times i2 equals minus 5 minus 6i1 plus 8 times i2 and that equals plus 10. Okay, so now we do exactly what we did before. We want these coefficients here are the coefficients of i1 so we're going to make a matrix. Or this We consider this a matrix already. What we're going to do is now, to be technical, make the determinant by taking these coefficients to form the columns like this, minus 7, minus 6, and minus 6, and 8. So this simple matrix was formed from the components of current 1 and current 2. We had 7 minus 6, 7 minus 6. We had minus 6 and plus 8. Okay, so what's the value of this determinant? Here we have 56 minus plus 36. That equals 20. Now, to determine I1, we go back and we can work with this matrix right here, except that these were the coefficients of I1, and we're going to replace that column with these numbers right here. So we have minus 5, 10, leave that column alone, the I2 column. And that matrix divided by 20 that equals I1. And let's see, this will equal 20 in the denominator. This is minus 40 minus negative 60, or that would be plus positive 60. So that equals, that's 20. 20 divided by 20 is plus 1 amp. So we've determined what I1 is. It's 1 amp, had a plus sign. It is plus 1 amp, so we do have the correct direction for I1. Okay, let's see about I2. To determine I2, now 
This was the I1 column here. That stays the same. But now the I2 column, that gets replaced with these two numbers. So we have minus 5 and 10. And this is divided by 20. So this is equal to 70 minus plus 30 divided by 20. So that equals 40 divided by 20 equals plus 2 amps. So without much problem at all, we were able to determine current I1 is plus 1 amp and current I2 is plus 2 amps. So that means that in fact they are going in clockwise directions. Now for resistor 6, then that's going to be the difference. Here we have this is 2 amps and this is 1 amp in this direction. So the current through resistor 6 will be 1 amp going upward. And that's for a resistor of 6 ohms. So that's it. We want to try to pick a, a fairly straightforward demonstration that shows that when you have only voltage sources in your in your circuit, you can very quickly and very easily write down what your mesh currents are and then immediately solve for your two unknowns or three unknowns or depending upon, of course, how large the circuit is. Okay, that's all we have to say for this video. Come back and join us for some more videos and we'll see if we can solve some more problems.